and he traveled around and that's how he got money before he became famous uh, doing magic tricks. Don Knotts was a ventriloquist. Dick Van Dyke ordered magic from the old Johnson Smith catalog and loved doing magic tricks and decided to become an actor later on in life. But I think the most famous celebrity who not only loved doing magic and made a career of the movies and acting was Orson Welles. Not only was he a professional magician later on in life, he toured around the country performing his magic show, and even in Las Vegas. You know, a lot of people know him for uh, doing Citizen Kane, but on the radio in 1938, he did some real magic. He fooled a lot of people with the radio broadcast, Mercury Theater, The War of the Worlds. He scared a lot of people into thinking that the Martians were actually coming to the United States. And uh, it was big news and big headlines uh, for that day and time. And uh, he did scare a lot of people. A lot of people thought it was true. So to me, that was a real magic trick, making people believe that uh, the Martians were actually invading the world with his War of the World broadcast from H.G. Wells. So he was a professional magician. So today on our show, we're going to pay tribute to Orson Welles, who was not only a great actor, great director, great filmmaker, but also a magician. We hope that you'll enjoy our Magic Monday for today. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see all of our famous magicians and uh, not-so-famous magicians. Hope you have a great day. Till next time, it's your old pal Bob. Now, ladies and gentlemen, through the magic of Facebook, here's Orson Welles. Have a great day. I've never had a friend in my life who wanted to see a magic trick. You know? Yeah. I don't know anybody who's, who wants to see a magic trick. So I do it professionally. It's the only way I get to perform. You know, you know, there are people in the world who say, show us a, a, a trick, you know. I went once, I went once to, a, to a, a birthday party for Louis B. Mayer with a rabbit in my pocket, which I was going to take out of his hat. And uh, on came Judy Garland and Danny Kaye and Danny Thomas and everybody you ever heard of. And then Al Jolson sang for two hours and my rabbit was peeing all <laughs> over me, you know. And at the dawn was starting to rise over the Hillcrest Country Club as we said goodnight to Louis B. Mayer. And nobody had asked me to do a magic trick. <laughs> but the rabbit and I went home. <laughs> Unsung. <laughs> what, what, what makes a good magician? He said, seriously. <laughs> seriously. What makes a good magician? He's a man who can get that rabbit out in time. <laughs> <laughs>
That thing isn't dangerous, it's fatal. Just get up on the platform, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, what's with the celery and the lettuce? Ain't this kind of a crazy way to make a salad? <laughs> Hold the music, Dean. This is only for the purpose of demonstration. Hmm? After all, vegetables don't bleed. <laughs> Watch very carefully. Yeah. Push. <laughs> ah, alas, for your kind of him well. <laughs> Imagine if that cabbage head was human. Mm -hmm. you, Supposing you know, it was yours, even. Yeah, sir, you know any card tricks? Well, it's a nice card tricks, easy enough. Slide Dean, it. Dean, this mm. is the big time card tricks. Just put your head in that hole. Magically, this Tibetan wonder chopper separates the men from the boys. A little wonder music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My head from my shoulders, that'll separate. All right. Hold him in, girls, so we can't get out. I promise you, you won't feel a thing. Dean, huh? are you comfortable? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, might look a little better on you, Orson. <laughs> uh, what are you doing with that knife, pal? <laughs> I just want to get the feel of it. Huh? Just want to get the feel of it, that's all. That's the feel of it. There we are. All right, hold the music. Now, before we attempt this experiment, have you any last message for our viewers? <laughs> Who gave you this trick, Jeannie? <laughs> Now then, after the death blade has passed through Mr. Martin's neck, severing the spinal column, the esophagus, and the medulla umbligata, it will snip off that celery. Would you put the other oh, celery's there? That's right. We'll snip off the celery there and place just under where Mr. Martin's nose will have been. Are you ready? Now I want you to use all your all your strength, girls, and all your weight. I'm gonna use all my weight too, Dean. <laughs> One. On the count of three, we're going to push. You understand what I mean? Two. Three. Ah! 